Hey there, Math 237 students, Zach here. In week nine, we'll learn how to represent a point or a set of points in R2 or R3 using some new coordinate systems. You see, up to now, we've always described points in R3, for example, using their x, y, z coordinates, their Cartesian coordinates, right? We can reach this point by moving x units in this direction, y units in this direction, and z units in this direction. But in certain situations, it may be more natural to describe this same point in a completely different way. For instance, I could tell you how to get to this point by specifying its distance to the origin, which maybe I'll call rho, the angle it makes with the positive x-axis, theta, and the angle it makes with the positive z-axis, phi. These three pieces of information give us a new way to describe this point in space. They're known as the point's spherical coordinates. If you're wondering why someone would ever choose to describe a point in this way, think about the following example. Maybe the origin represents the center of the planet Earth, and we're trying to describe a specific point in the Earth's atmosphere. By reporting that point's distance to the origin, is it below the surface, is it on the surface, is it above the surface? Its longitude, the angle the point makes with the prime meridian, and its latitude, the angle it makes with the equator, we're doing something very similar. The only difference is that in spherical coordinates, we actually report the angle made with the positive z-axis, not the equator. But the idea is the same. Now if all of this sounds vaguely familiar, it may be because you've actually seen an example of a non-Cartesian coordinate system in R2, polar coordinates. Back in Math 135, and maybe in some of your other math courses as well, you learned that instead of representing a point in R2 using its x and y values, you can represent this point using quantities r and theta. Here r denotes the point's distance to the origin, and theta denotes the angle the point makes with the positive x-axis. This coordinate system is super useful for describing things like circles. Of course, if you're feeling a little rusty with your polar coordinates, don't worry. Our first module for this week is a refresher on this coordinate system, and there you'll also see some new applications to calculus. Later in the week, we'll actually use what we know about polar coordinates in R2 to define another new coordinate system in R3. Instead of using the point's Cartesian or spherical coordinates, we can specify its location by reporting its height, z, the distance above or below the xy plane, and then the polar coordinates of this projected point, this point's distance to the origin, r, and its angle made with the positive x-axis, theta. These three pieces of information, r, theta, and z, make up what we call the cylindrical coordinates of our original point. The systems we've discussed so far are some of the standard ones, but it turns out that we can define all sorts of other wacky coordinate systems. In the second half of week 9, you'll see systems like this one, where we describe points in r2 by reporting some other quantities, u and v. In this example, u and v are related to x and y through these crazy formulas. We'll see that graphically, a set of points that looks pretty nice in one coordinate system may look totally different in another coordinate system. When we convert from x's and y's to u's and v's, our set of points may appear to be rotated, stretched, or changed in a variety of other ways. In this example, a nice rectangular region in the xy plane appears significantly differently when viewed in what we might call the uv plane. This picture on the right shows all the same points as the picture on the left, but now written in terms of their uv coordinates. One of our goals for this week will be to understand how a set of points is transformed when switching coordinate systems. As we'll see toward the end of the course, this will have some pretty exciting applications when we discuss integration.